So I'm Lakin. I work at Robert Morris in the development office and welcome to virtual RMU Spirit Week. Woo! I introduce Maddie Darcy. She's 2019 alumna. She will be painting with us tonight. So Maddie. All right, I'm gonna take it from here. Um, we are waiting for a couple more people to join this class with us, if that's okay with everybody. Um, the first thing that I will say is if you have not opened your paint kit, go ahead and start opening those. Um, do they have control to open their cameras or do I tell them? We don't, I don't see a lot of you on camera. Um, join with video if you have that opportunity. I'd love to see like what y'all are painting while I'm painting up here in the first place. Um, but I do want you, if you have not opened your paint kit, go ahead and start opening those paint kits. Um, break open that paint. You will need a paint cup or a water cup to put some water in so we can clean our brush. And you will need um, a paper plate or a plate of some sort of type uh, to go ahead and pour those paints on with you. Um, right now, everybody's muted. So if you have questions, go ahead and raise your hand or uh, type in the chat and I'm co-hosting today with Jessica. And um, if you wanna just like keep your head in and wave, we're gonna do this a couple hey. different times as we're letting people in through the class. Um, hey, I see some familiar faces on here looking good. Turn those cameras on. Um, but we're gonna give everybody a couple more minutes to get started here. I'm gonna go ahead and pour my paint. Um, so go ahead and do the, the same if you are there and feel free to be sending questions. We're still letting people in. Um, and we're gonna, I'm hoping to get started at least around 7.15, but we're gauging it by um, how many participants have like showed up already in the Zoom. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and do that. Hi babies, we've seen some pictures. Yes, hi. Oh my goodness, so excited. Exciting. Um, so go ahead and get those materials in front of you. I'm going to do the same thing. Um, and then I'm going to do like an introduction of myself once we get close to the full number of the class. So go ahead and turn on those cameras if you've got them. If not, raise your hand. Let me know if you've got questions. Okay. I'm going to turn around here. All right. Okay. Oh, hey, I would hi. like to say hi to everyone tonight, Maddie. I see Miss Sheila Galanka online with her mom. It's great to see you. Oh, familiar faces. I love it. Love it. Love it. Okay, let's see. I want these ones and I want paint on these. Go ahead and give yourself, if you've got like a paper plate, like at home, if I'm painting, um like i can i will use like a, a dinner plate because it washes off really easy with soap um i'll talk about that throughout the class the whole night just so you know this paint will not come off of your clothes it dries as a plastic if you get it on uh your table you can like wipe it away uh with some water some cleaner it looks like all of my paints do also have little tabs on the top so go ahead and peel those open if my assistant um wants to help me do that, so I'll be quick. <laughs> Pour your paint out. I'm really excited to choose this painting. Um, and I'm excited to work with RMU again. Let's see. What years do we have RMU graduation or graduates? Let's see, Let's see what I can, it, does it raise their hand for me? Let me see the chat. Let me see if I can figure out where my chat is. Okay, let me check and make sure this chat is open. So if you've got that paint in front of you, go ahead and give yourself a big scoop of whatever paint you got. I'm giving myself a, a like a hefty amount. Go ahead and do a little bit more of that. Um, I would also say have a second paper plate or a second paint in front of you. Go ahead and break out those aprons. If you've got 
everyone's got like a little apron and a little plastic baggie. Uh, I have, because I've been teaching here for a year, I have designated painting overalls um, that I absolutely love to teach in. It's very Bob Ross, Bob, <laughs> uh, for me up in Savannah. I'm down here in Savannah. And once we get this chat open, we're working on that right now. Do you, uh, I'm going to ask where everybody's from and where their graduation years were. Let's see. Okay, we're working on that on the RMU side. We're looking for some chats. Get all my paint out here. I almost want to unmute everybody. I want to talk to everybody. Do you want to pull up a chair on this side? Is there like one color we'll use more of or just put the same amount out? Go ahead and put the same amount out. We're going to be like mixing a lot of colors in your um, in your paint kit. You also have a little a mixing sheet. So if this is an easier reference for you, everyone is a different type of learner. Um, so I'm definitely a more visual person and I love being able to say, oh, I want to make this color, I mix these two colors, but I'll definitely be able to walk through and say, all right, we're putting orange out right now. Um, we're mixing our red and our yellow and whatnot. Let's see, chat. Okay. Let's see. Chat is, so maybe this is what, this is what our coordinator has said. Yeah, I think that just may interfere more than one person talks at the same time. Okay, so what we're gonna do because we can't get this chat on, uh, so we can type. I'm gonna turn off everybody's. I'm gonna un unmute everyone. Let's see. So if you're talking, uh, just be mindful if someone else is talking. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and select this one. It says unmute all. Taking a run. I click it. Okay, everybody should be unmuted at this point. Give me a holler. Say hey. Did you close that? Hi. Hey. Hey. All right. Cause can I hear everybody? Give me a shout out. Tell me where we're coming from. Hi, from Beaver Falls. Beaver Falls. Bye. Where else? Okay, I'm gonna mute back. <laughs> She's like, I'm I'm done. I'm out of it. Where else? Where's everybody else coming from? I'm in my apartment at RMU. <laughs> RMU apartment. Happy Spirit <laughs> Week. Very exciting. Oh my goodness. Yes, absolutely. Does everybody who has just joined, I would encourage you. If you have not already, go ahead and open your paint kits. You can prop up your canvas like I have right here. I just want to be able to show you what I'm doing. Uh, but go ahead and open up all of our little paints. They have little tabs on the inside. And I'm going to ask you to get a cup that we can fill with water. If you are just joining us, we're waiting on a few more people. And then uh, we're going to start this class. So while I have everybody unmuted, unless you've remuted yourself, um, what are some of our graduation years? When did everybody graduate? 2016. 05 and 11. 2014. Uh-huh. All right. All right. And did we stay in the greater Pittsburgh area? Did anybody venture out? Anybody who's in this class right now? Tamir. Say it one more time. I moved away, but now I'm back. <laughs> She's back, right, exactly. She's always gonna come back. Um, well, I will tell y'all that I moved to Savannah, Georgia, so I get to be streaming here from a little bit down south where the sunshine is wonderful. And I, I know it's fabulous down here. Um, and it's really cool. I love, I have a degree in communications from RMU. So I've been thinking about all day, like 
all the people who helped me get to where I am today and um, and aren't being from Pittsburgh actually like helped me get my job <laughs> which is funny it's like the people you know right <laughs> so um, I'll introduce her a couple times this is just because she's going to be my assistant she's also my boss mm -hmm. she just wants to like be here to assist me on this zoom meeting um, and she's also from Pittsburgh from the Irwin area is anyone else? I, I'm not sure where that, that <laughs> is, but we got greater Pittsburgh area all around us. So we're really excited to do this. I'm waiting for, looking for cameras. Let's see. We got half the class. We are gonna get started here in like five minutes. Let me see. Uh, if anybody else shows up, and if not, we can go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to encourage you to up, open up those paints if you've just joined us. And um, definitely everybody is unmuted. So if you have questions, like let us know. Um, but we're going to go ahead and do one of the first steps of our RMU paintings. So we've got, uh, I talked with the team and we really thought about different ways that we could represent RMU through a painting. And one of my favorite paintings that we got, uh, or that one of my favorite pictures that they were showing uh, me to pick from, I really love the Nicholson Rotunda and it like brought back all the memories of, um, you know, walking back from my buildings and running through, it'd be like so cold. I'd run through my little building and and go to Romo's and grab a sandwich and hang out before I go back to my dorm. And I've been thinking about all the things I used to do back a couple years ago, which is just so different being down in the South now, but um, I'm so excited. I've got a little bit of my RMU merch on. It says RMU, it's backwards, right? Tamara, you see it, right? I mean, <laughs> some of my favorite shirts actually I wear all the time. Uh, we are waiting for a couple more people if you have just joined us and then we are going to get started with our painting here. Um, but go ahead and turn on your video so I can see you if you have just joined us. Does anybody have any questions so far? I got head noggin shaken. They're like, no, I don't have any questions just yet. I'm going to do like a little introduction. Let's see. Okay. And give it one more minute. Okay, so I want you to open up those brushes. We're gonna go ahead and do a little dip into our water if you have not already. All right, there we go. I see some more faces turning those cameras on. I wanna see you, I wanna see what you're painting. Definitely will help if you can turn your canvas around and be like, Miss Maddie, I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Or, or you, if I've skipped a step that, um, that we should slow down and redo, I absolutely wanna be able to see pictures. Um, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Let's see. So I got all my paint here. If you've just joined us. Oh, we're missing blue. We definitely need that color, this one. Let's see. Would you grab me that painting? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, Today we're going to be drawing uh, or painting our Nicholson Rotunda, very RMU. Um, and if you, has anybody taken a uh, painting with a, a twist class before? I got no, I got one, two, three. Yep. A couple of there we go. I want to hear from you. So y'all know I want to hear from you and play games and whatnot. Um, for those of you who have just joined me, um, I'm just gonna explain that we're gonna paint this painting in different steps. Um, and there's like, I'm, we're gonna get through it. I'm really excited to paint this with you. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and do my introduction. I think we have most of our class 
Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. Uh, if you would assist me, Jessica. So I just want to say welcome to everyone who has just joined us. Uh, my name's Maddie. I am an alum from 2019. I graduated with a degree in communications. Um, I am now in beautiful Savannah, Georgia, and I have been coordinating so I could join y'all for Spirit Week and teach like a little bit of arm you love if you are paying from home or far away. Um, or if you're in your dorm, like uh, we're really excited just to give everybody this opportunity. I also have an assistant here today. Her name is Jessica. I've mentioned her a, a couple of times. This is Jess. <laughs> Jess is from Pittsburgh. That's how I got my job down here. He sent her an email and I said, I just moved here from Pittsburgh. And she was like, I'm a Steelers fan. I'm from Pittsburgh too. So uh, we instantly clicked and I have been teaching painting ever since. Um, so if you've just joined us, we have put our paint out on our paper plates. We have opened all of our brushes. Sometimes I like to put mine in the water cup. We all have a water cup that will be important to washing the paint off of our brushes. If you have the ability to turn your camera on, I'd love to see your smiling faces. Absolutely. Everybody is unmuted. And we are trying to figure out on the tech side if we can get some chat going. I love to hear questions. I have a lot of questions for y'all, um, but we're working on that to get that turned on. But I do, I would like to start this painting with y'all. Um, and so everybody has paint out in front of them. Everybody has three brushes. Uh, we are gonna be using three different brushes today. We have a big brush. If you've got a big brush, like everybody should have one in front of you. This is our big brush. Um, we also have a medium size. I call them Papa Bear. We got Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Baby Bear. Let's see, it's just like a makeup video, right? <laughs> That's how I was practicing. I was like, ooh, yes, big brush. Big brush, medium brush, and little brush. If you have never taken a painting class before, I will tell you that this big brush is very important. We want to paint our background first with this big brush. Now, if you try to use Mama Bear to paint this whole sunset, it's gonna take you way more than two hours. We have two hours in here or a little bit of time that's gonna run over since we're getting started here a little late. We're trying to get our chat box figured out. Um, but the first step of this painting with Papa Bear is it's gonna feel kind of silly. That's what I always say in my classes. Let's see, there's my shapes. Drew out some shapes for y'all today is we are gonna make a semicircle. So like, if you could imagine that this is our canvas, we are gonna paint a semicircle and it's gonna be white on the inside. So you're not gonna be able to see it while I'm painting it. Jessica, if you could hold this for one second. We are painting a semicircle. It's gonna be towards the top of our canvas. So that's perfect right there, right there. And it feels kind of uh, reverse than what you should be doing because you're painting white on white. You're like, Miss Maddie, what are you doing? Um, but trust me, we, we wanna have this blend in our sunset. Go ahead and paint a semicircle in with white. It's gonna help all of our colors blend in. Go ahead and start doing that. And one thing that really helps for me for this painting is using really long strokes. Everybody has a different brush stroke. So let's see, I'm gonna mix a couple different colors here so you can see it a little bit better on like a test paper. Let's see, we'll use this one. So when you are painting this semicircle, you wanna use long strokes just like that. If you are using little itty bitty choppy strokes, it's not gonna look as smooth as just doing something that is one way, one side of the canvas to the other. Okay. But I'm still doing that in white at this time. I just wanted to go ahead and show you in a different color. Chat was turned off from Town Hall and he has it turned on. But let's see if that will work. Let's see if our chat is going to turn on. I'm going to admit some more people. Welcome. Welcome. If you are just joining us, go ahead and if you haven't already, go ahead and open your kit and pour out your paint. We are starting the first steps of this painting. We are painting a white semicircle in the background. Long broad strokes. If you need more paint, use more paint. If you feel like it's very dry, 
Go ahead and dip more, a little bit of water into it. Add more paint in there. We, we're not going to be shy here. We're not. You can get on in there. Okay. All right. Now that you can't see the white that you've painted on your canvas, the very next step of this painting is we are going to start that sunset. See how we have orange kind of going down in our bottom? Did you grab that? We have you orange in the very bottom of our painting. So it goes orange straight across. So at the very bottom, like right into that white paint, we're gonna start adding in some orange and some yellow. And we're gonna start bringing it up through this white. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna mix my red and my yellow. I'm gonna make some orange. So here's some orange here, some red and some yellow. If you have questions, go ahead and speak up. If I am moving too fast, let me know. I know everybody's joining at a different pace right now. But if you are running with me, go ahead. Add that orange in. Very pretty. Long, broad strokes, just like that. Maddie, are we doing the white filled in, the semicircle, completely white? So we are filling that semicircle in completely right. You are exactly right. Go ahead and fill that in with white. So it will help us blend. I'm just gonna give this one to you. It's gonna help us blend in the rest of our colors. And if you get little drips, that's okay because we'll be able to cover them up. I have a little bit of drips on my page or on my canvas, but that's okay. Um, let's see. So we're gonna do that orange stripe going straight across. The next thing that I wanna do is I want my sunset to get a little bit lighter. So I'm going to make some yellow and some white. This is my next color. Just the, about the same as this color, I'm mixing some yellow and some white. I just want like a light yellow. We already have white on that semicircle, so go ahead and add a little bit more in. It's going to be for blending purposes. If you are a woman or a man or whoever you are who does their makeup every day, you're going to know just about this blending. And I want you to go right into right into that orange. So you're gonna see it blend and we're gonna move upwards. Going all the way up with it. Okay, so everybody's unmuted here. Tell me what year you graduated or what's your, you've been, have you been back to RMU, et cetera? Have a quiet class, oh my goodness. Well, if you are just joining us, I graduated in 2019 and I am in Savannah and I cannot wait to get back up to Pittsburgh. I don't miss the cold, but I miss the people and I want to be able to visit and um, see everybody here in, the, in whatever Corona times are, are over whenever that happens. Everybody's been pretty stationary. Um, at least down here in Savannah. So right now we have the orange of our sunrise. So, or it's a sunset, sunrise, whatever it will mean to you. We have the orange of our sunrise and then it gradually gets a little bit lighter with some yellow. And I'm gonna leave it alone. So basically all of my white has been filled in with these very warm, beautiful colors. That's one of the things that I remember about um, living in Pennsylvania, the sunrises and the sunsets were so beautiful with the mountains in the background. And I just, we have, it's very flat here in Savannah, isn't it? <laughs> we have the beach, but uh, it's very flat. There's not a lot of mountains. Um, and so I miss that almost. I don't know if that like adds to it. If you feel like you need an extra plate, if you need extra paper, go ahead and grab some, feel free to do it. If I am running too fast, let me know. If I'm running too slow, congratulations. You are a fast expert painter, <laughs> good job. If you wanna turn your painting around so I can see your screen, I'd love to see it. Oh yes, we have some beautiful sunrises in Tamara. Yeah, rocking it. All right, I like it. Let's see, let me move my screen, see what everybody else is doing. 
All right. Oh, looking good, Valerie. I like it. Let's see. And if you have that opportunity to turn your screen on, I would love to see your painting. I think it will definitely help um, so I can like uh, reflect on if what I'm seeing through the camera is uh, making sense down on your side. So definitely, if you have that opportunity, go ahead and turn that camera on. I would love some. If you have paper towels with you or if you have a towel, one thing I'd like to do is I like to dip my my Papa Bear into my water cup, kind of like dip that down in there. And you can hit it on the bottom, that's okay. Uh, but we definitely want uh, our big brush to be clean in between putting different types of colors um, on our canvases. So a good way to test that is you clean your brush in the water and then you wipe it on a napkin. And if it's coming up with no color, it means your brush is clean. Uh, I have these beautiful overalls, my beautiful Bob Ross overalls that I have been designed through all the classes I've gotten to teach down here. I'm always running around and wiping my paint on me because why not? I'd rather wipe it on my, my beautifully designed overalls by myself than uh, waste more paper towels, but that's okay. I want y'all to definitely have some paper towels in front of you to clean off your brushes. So I'm gonna give you a second to do that. And the next step of this painting, we are not gonna touch this sunrise anymore. We are gonna go ahead and start with this. We're gonna walk around. Now we're gonna ignore the rotunda. I'm going to ignore this rotunda, but there is a whole black bottom. Everything's black up there. And then we went ahead and put trees in the background because Pennsylvania is very hilly. We have a little bit of a sun right here, if you can see it. We have a little tiny sun. So what I will go ahead and do, and do is mix my yellow and, um, and maybe a little bit. You can make it more orange. You can make it lighter, darker. If you want to go ahead and put that up. We're gonna put that sun in and then we are gonna paint the black of the bottom of our canvas. So I'm gonna, I think I want my sun to be a little bit more orange. I'm gonna make like orange in here. And it can honestly be on either side, just being mindful that we're gonna have a rotunda right here in the middle. But I'm gonna go ahead and make a little circle. What I'm using is my, my mama bear brush. So my medium sized brush. And I'm going to go ahead and just mix some orange again. We're mixing orange. And I'm going to give myself a little, a little circle or a semicircle. Oh, that's too light for you guys to see. Let me add some red into it. We'll have a red sun. So we're going to make a little, if you want to make it more yellow, you'll be able to see it. Let's see if we can see it a little bit closer here. So I made a red sun. You can make it a yellow sun. You can make it a little bit lighter. I just want y'all to be able to see it on that side. Have you noticed I've spent one year here saying y'all instead of yens? Oh my goodness. Some Pittsburgh ease thinking about it. We're thinking about it. I still say yens. You know what I was talking about the other day? It was pierogies. Oh. When was the last time you had a pierogi? I, you can buy them here, and I have. I know, but I, I feel just mixed. Had one, like, a week ago. <laughs> we should have a pierogi party. It could just be for us, but yeah. it's fine. I really miss uh, pierogies. Out. I try to explain that to a lot of people down here in Savannah too, yeah. because it's they very. Don't understand. What's that? They don't understand what they're. No, making. they don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> I was like it's mashed potatoes. <laughs> it's like a little dumpling. <laughs> <laughs> some onions no it's delicious I love it let's see no she hasn't texted me back what did she oh, the chat's not gonna work okay all right everybody now you gotta try cucumbers and tomatoes over top of them what yeah you make your pierogies and put a little bit of mozzarella cheese and then add cucumbers and tomatoes on top if I like new boss cucumbers. old boss <laughs> <laughs> I got to work with a couple of you in this chat floating around here. It's really exciting seeing one world to the other. So I like to see everybody from that side here. 
So we have painted in our sun, and I'm really interested about the pierogies. We'll have a pierogi party. <laughs> yeah. We have painted in our sun. I went ahead and made mine red, so it might be a little bit more apparent to you guys than doing a yellow sun. And what we are gonna do is we are gonna paint in this black bottom to our canvas. And one thing very specific that we are going to do is I would like to start this painting on the very bottom. So this black is very he heavily pigmented. If you get it up into this orange, it will mix with your entire sunrise. So the way of letting that dry, I like to start from the very bottom. Let's see, let me show you up here. Very bottom of the canvas and work my way all the way across and then upwards. Just like that. You know what feels different sitting down and teaching? <laughs> I always, uh, if you've taken a, a painting with a twist class before, uh, your artist is usually up, standing up in the, the top of the stage. I don't remember the last time I sat down and painted. Kind of refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> I did a lot of standing yesterday, so I'm digging it. Absolutely. Let's see. And you are just working your way up. Like I said, if you did not hear me before, where's one of my oopsie papers? No, I don't, I do want this one. You are using long broad, let's see. If, you're, if your paint is coming off like this, it means you do not have enough paint. Or what you can do is you can dip your brush in a little bit of water, a little bit, not a ton, and dry it off. And your, your paint's gonna be a little bit more liquid doing that. So what I want you to do is I'm gonna remind you, we want long, broad strokes. If you are using little choppy strokes, it adds in this really cool texture, um, but it's a little more seamless if you are using just long strokes from left to right all the way across your canvas. But if you like that texture look, go for it. This is your painting, absolutely. I want you to customize. Make it yourself. It is your memory of RMU. Let's see. And then we have one more step after painting this bottom. And we are going to take a little break here and play a game. How's everybody going? Does anybody have any questions? We going good? Silence is the answer. <laughs> we are working our way all the way up to the sun. Miss Maddie, I will say a lot of us as students are conditioned to basically not talk. And that is our <laughs> way of saying that, yes, we are good. Um, if we're not saying anything that we're okay, we're good. It's not anything bad. It's just we have been conditioned to do that at this point because that's just how our teachers have reacted. So is that it's how bad. Zoom is running? Listen, this is I I'm graduated, so I haven't actually been on Zoom, and I was really excited to do this because I I wanted to see what the hype was about. I was like, oh my gosh, this sounds so cool. Um, and, but that is wonderful to know that if you are not asking questions, that you are just doing your thing. But I hope if you feel like you have questions or um, if you feel like you have like an oopsie somewhere that uh, let me know. I will let y'all know um, this paint. If you make an oopsie like perhaps like up in your sun, in your sunrise like this, what you want to do to fix it is you want this paint to dry. If you are mixing wet on wet paint, it will make a bunch of funny colors. Um, so if you have an oopsie just like this, I'm giving you an example right now. I'm gonna go ahead and put like mountains up there so I'm not too concerned at this point, but I'm just letting you know um, that if you have an oopsie spot, it's okay, we can fix it. But what I want you to do is I want you to let it dry before you touch it again. And generally in my classes, like. If I get someone with like an oopsie spot, they're like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Help. So um, since my Zoom, like since you were telling me that Zoom's going to be 
a little bit more. If someone will voice their questions. I thought that was a good little tidbit to put out there. They get a lot of Mr. Fix It and they just like want to paint over it while it's wet. And I'm like, no, just let it dry. Wait a second. <laughs> We'll fix it, give it a second to dry. And we are making our way up. I'm talking a lot, so I'm just really excited. Um, <laughs> so go ahead, and we're gonna go all the way up into that line. It's just gonna be a straight black line across. You can either dip your brush in a little bit more water to help kind of spread this paint over the canvas so it's a little bit cleaner. My line comes out a little bit cleaner if I do that. For my girlfriend here who um, was just telling me about Zoom, what is your um, major at RMU right now? Um, I am a junior marketing major. Junior marketing, okay. Do we have anybody else in our audience who is also in marketing? I was, graduated in 2016, marketing major. <laughs> oh, that's great. And what and what are you doing now? Are you using your degree? Oh, this is Lakin. I work at RMU. <laughs> oh, this is, sorry, Lakin, hey, what's up? <laughs> Lakin got her degree in marketing and now works for the university. How cool is that? A little bit of RMU love. So I was, I was very curious, do we have any, since RMU is such a big accounting school, I was really curious to see how many accountants were in this class tonight, or if we've got more creatives, or what direct, direction everybody is. I'm an accounting major. All right, and what interested you in, um, in this Spirit Week activity? Um, I'm very bad at painting, and I was like, why not try it? And do you have your camera on? I don't. Give me a second. Let's see how it's going. It's not horrible. All right. If you want to turn your canvases around, that looks awesome. So if you have the whole, like, um, the black part in your sky done, go ahead and let it dry. Very important part of painting acrylics is your dry time. So you want your entire painting to be dry before you add another step in. And the way to know if your painting is dry is see how shiny mine looks. That means it's not dry at all. Um, so it's definitely gonna need some time before we go ahead and put that rotunda in there. Um, is anyone else wanna turn their canvas around so I can see what we got going on? Or your, or your computer or iPhone or or whatnot. Oh, we have beautiful skies. These are looking great. Great job, everybody. All right. Oh, I'm digging it. I'm so excited. Okay. So I just have like a little bit that I want to touch up. So we have this black line that goes straight across. It's very pretty. If you would like to keep it like this, I absolutely encourage you to keep that this separation between sunrise and background. If you would like to go ahead, what I did for this painting is I added in, it's like little trees, but you're not gonna be able to see the trees because everything's a shadow. So I kind of made it like ridged and bumpy. Let's see if we can see it a little bit better back here. A little bit ridged and bumpy. So it's not a perfect straight line anymore. If you really like how that straight line looks, I would encourage you to keep it. We're going to let it dry. If you want to add in these teeny tiny, I'm saying about the size of like my finger, my fingernail, itty bitty little bumps and hiccups throughout our entire painting. Go ahead and paint that in. I'm going to go ahead and paint that in. So if you are interested in doing that, I will lead the way. If not, feel free to just let it dry. Let it hang out for a second. Come back here. Put those in. So I'm gonna have a big hill here because I made my oopsie so I can show everybody. I have like a little hill. The way I do that is I am taking this little bitty baby uh, mama brush. Let's see, let's find a piece. Okay, this will work. This will work just fine. And I'm just making, so if we're hypothetically speaking, saying this is our line, I'm trying to make sure my white paint doesn't drip. 
-hmm. I'm just making like little itty bitty kind of, um, uh, I wouldn't say curly cues, but I just want to add in a little bit of texture, a little bit of ridges. It isn't going to be perfect. Um, just a little bit of mountainous, mountainous trees back there and one big mountain. But that also helps me because I can, uh, I'm an, uh, more of an abstract landscape painter. And so and in black, I, right? what's that? It's in black, right? In black, yes, ma'am. Um, so when I'm painting at home, I don't like to use straight lines just because they're just so hard to make perfect or it drives you crazy trying to make like the most perfect straight line. Um, so I almost, <laughs> I encourage you to use ripples, do all sorts of, um, make it creative, make it your own. If you have a perfect black line that's drawn straight across, go for it, good for you. Everybody has their own forte. And it's really cool because like here at my studio or at different painting with the twist studios, you get to know different artists and they all have um, like different mediums or they have different uh, styles of painting that they're interested in. So for example, someone could be interested in um, like more animated style. So it means like you wanna have those perfect lines like doing um, cartoons and whatnot. And, and I, that just blows me away because uh, that is so hard to do. And I have so much, it's like, um, like if you're, if you ever get your nails done and you see the little lady holding your hand, she's like doing a flower and like little nail designs. I think about that. I'm like, oh my goodness. Like I can paint big and I can paint all sorts of lines. Um, but I could imagine doing it on a fingernail that straight and that perfect. <laughs> So right now, what I'm doing after I have painted this black is I am taking my big brush, my big pop bear, and I'm going to go ahead and dip him in my cup. You can get aggressive with him. You can, you can make sure he's like hitting the bottom of the cup. See how much black is coming out of my paintbrush still? We want to make sure most of that black is out of your brush. So it's like, whoop, feels like maybe I'm stirring a milkshake in here or something like that. But I just want to make sure all that black is out. It's very pigmented. Our two most pigmented colors are our blue and our black. So we want to make sure we're getting a lot of that out before. We're going to paint one more thing. And then we're going to go ahead and take a break. Let me just, do you want me, should I just admit um, at oh. this point? Sure. Welcome back. Everybody is unmuted if you are just joining us today. If you are get been kicked out and coming back in, welcome back. Welcome back. Right now I am cleaning my brush off. And once I don't have any paint on it at all, we are going to paint one more part of this painting. We are going to paint this blue sky up in this white sky. Is that from my spot? Okay, it's over. All right. Yes, Patty. I know we have a hiccup in here somewhere. Hello. Is it still there? Hello. I have a question. Yes. Can you show how to do the mountainy things again, please? Absolutely. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm actually gonna show you on the very back of this canvas. So. This is a little bit closer. I'm going to draw my line right here. I'm pretending that everything below me is painted black. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my little brush, my mama bear butt brush. So not my smallest one right in the middle, right in the middle, Goldilocks. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm making just little ridges. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just moving my, like, um, like on an earthquake, when you're re when uh, have you seen that on the movies when an earthquake kind of goes up and down on the little size mixing? Uh, that's about kind of what I'm doing. It makes little imperfect ridges. I'm trying to see if it's coming out a little bit better. 
getting a little closer. It's kind of seismic going up and down. You may get like a little bit. Does that help explain it? Or one thing that always helps me is testing it out on paper or in front of me before I'm doing it. Let yes, me see. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, no, absolutely. Ask questions. If you have questions, go for it. Painting is not easy. It doesn't come easy to anybody. Um, there are definitely going to be um, so shapes here that we're going to integrate here once everything is dry. We are painting one more step before we play a little game here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding the blue into the sky. So I like to wait because when you mix blue and yellow, it makes green. And we don't want a tornado sky. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to mix this blue in. And what I want to do or encourage you, my dirty plate here, but I'm going to use it, um, is I would like to encourage you, I want a little bit of a darker blue than uh, the blue paint that we have coming out from our tube. So what I'm going to do to make it darker is I'm going to add an itsy bitsy teeny weeny itty bitty polka dot bikini amount of black. So you can't even see how there's like very, oh, let's see if you can even see it. Like a, a teeny tiny dab of black into this blue. Add in a little bit of, of it at a time. And we're just going to make, see if I wipe it on my apron. Don't do that if you don't have an apron. Everyone should have an apron. Um, just as a reminder, this paint does not come out of clothes. Um, but go ahead and wipe it on a napkin or just be mindful of the space that you're in. Add a little bit of black. I'm reusing paper plates because we are mindful out here. Um, and I'm making a little bit of a darker blue. See how this blue is a little bit darker than it originally is? And I'm just doing that by adding some black into it. So if you know what an ombre is, you know where I'm going with this. It goes from darker to lighter. But just like the black, how we started with our most pigmented dark color at the bottom, we want to do that pigment up here at the top with that navy blue. That's what I'm going to go ahead and call it. It's a little bit of navy. Oh, you can't see it because my hair is so big. OK. <laughs> so we're starting with navy blue. And I'm going to just go broad stroke straight across navy blue. Oh, that was not the color I wanted to pick right there. Let's see, mix that in again, make that navy blue, just straight across the top up here. And it, it's pretty close to black, but if it's black, you wanna add more blue into it. And to do an ombre, so you have that navy blue, go ahead and just take a big scoop of blue and start mixing it into it. It's gonna be kind of like a rainbow of blues here. You want to keep, we're going to make it lighter and lighter as it gets closer to the yellow. Hi, I have a question. Okay, go ahead. Okay, um, so um, someone must have hit a telephone pole in our area and our power just went off. So I'm just joining back in. Oh. So, <laughs> so I like really lost connection. So we're doing a gray at the top right now. We if are just, doing a, how far are you in your painting? Um, so I have all the black finished with the little like tree tops or little maybe yes. little peaks and I, I just am at the very top part now. Okay. So I so miss what whatever doing, you're doing at the very top. Whatever. So what we're doing at the very top is we are starting our blue of our sky and we want to work it into an ombre. So I want my darkest blue at the top. And as I get closer to this yellow, it's going to be lighter and lighter and lighter. So I want you to mix some black and some blue together. And we're going to make like a navy. So that will be the first layer on top. And as you're working your way down, go ahead and mix more and more blue or even blue and white into this painting. We're just going to make it lighter and lighter and lighter on our way down. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. So, let's see. Add more blue, add a little white, getting lighter and lighter as we're going down here. Where did it go? 
Where's my, there you are. There you are. <laughs> Lighter and lighter. Let's see, I need, if your paint is not coming all the way across your canvas, like mine isn't right now, you can add a little bit of water into it to help um, mix that acrylic. Acrylic is actually a plastic based paint. So it will dry really fast. Um, and sometimes that works against you. Sometimes that works for you. Like, uh, like if you're in the studio and you got to go home, so <laughs> you don't want to leave with like a wet painting. What I'm doing is I'm mixing more blue and some white, getting lighter and lighter and lighter, lighter and lighter. There I go. I'm spilling paint everywhere. That's my job. Uh, lighter and lighter as I'm on my way down to the yellow of my sun yet. sunset, sunrise. I guess I should decide which one it would be, but I haven't. I never really did. If Alan was here, I think he took this picture. Um, he would tell us, but to me, it's both. <laughs> we don't have those down here. We kind of do. It kind of turns orange, but there's so many trees. <laughs> yeah. That's something I definitely missed about Pennsylvania. Okay, so we have um, some marketing um, majors. We have an accountant. Who else? What else is everybody's um, area of concentration? I'm in communication. Communications, awesome, I love to hear it. That is my degree, I got a degree in communications there. I loved, um, uh, well, I didn't love walking all the hills all the way across <laughs> campus. <laughs> you know how that is, but um, I think that is one of the most broad degrees you can get and it's, I think it's one of the best reasons why I'm a communicator today because I took all of those public speaking classes and you have to get up and talk in front of people for this job is really important. You have to paint, but you have to be able to talk to people. That's why I'm always asking you guys questions. <laughs> so we are bringing this blue down into our yellow, lighter and lighter. See, I have some spots. If you have, some white spots. Let's see if I can bring this canvas a little bit closer to you. Oh, I'm sticking. I don't know if it's going to translate that well, but some of my, my paint up here is splotchy. See how I have some whiteness like in here, like my paint didn't cover. If you also have that, one thing you can do is you can clean off your brush really, really well. And this is one of the steps that I'm going to go ahead and do to blend this a little bit down into my yellow so it's not quite a hard line, is I clean my brush really, really well. Once again, I've lost my face in here. Let's see, do I get both at this point? Maybe I'm sitting too close, that's it. I'm just too eager, I wanna be right front and center. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm cleaning my brush off one more time. I got paint all over me so you can't tell. But I want to have a very clean brush, I want if you want to go ahead and clean your water, definitely feel free to get up, step away and do that. We're not going to do anything crazy. We are about to take a dry break here, which means I want the entire canvas to be dry before we start the next step of this painting. But as long as your brush is clean, you don't have any of this blue on it, go ahead and dip it in some water. So it's not like soaking, dripping, but just has a little bit of water into it. And you can go over those areas that didn't cover. If you get a drip, that's okay. That means you have too much water on your brush. That's okay. What is Bob Ross? Mm -hmm. Happy accidents, right? So you can go over and fill in those little areas that didn't cover completely because this paint is still pretty wet. It's still pretty blendable. But what you can do is definitely dry it on a brush. Make sure your brush is clean. Once again, that's what I'm doing over here in this corner, making sure my brush is clean taking a little bit of water and um, taking most of that water off and then going back in here and cleaning up all these little spaces that have little itty bitty lines. And my paint's a little bit dry or it's a little bit of this light blue that I'm bringing into this dark blue, but that's okay. It looks kind of like, like clouds. And the last part that I'm gonna do here is I definitely wanna have this brush clean one more time just because I had a lot of spots to fill and I just want a little bit of water on it. 
and I want to just go over this edge right where my yellow was and just water it down a little bit. It's kind of like making this acrylic paint into like watercolor. If anybody's watercolored in here, it's more like that. That's what we're doing right now. But what we're doing is we're making a little bit of a, a less harsh line. And then we're gonna take a little break and a little, um, we're gonna do a little game here. So, so if someone turn their canvas around or your, your picture around, let me see what you got going on. Let's see, let's see. Oh, it's looking good, absolutely. Let me see it. We got that blue in there. Oh my gosh, Pro Blender down here. All right, I like it. They're looking awesome. Okay, so this is the part where we all are drying. Okay, oh yes, absolutely. And this is definitely a time to get up. You can walk around. Oh my gosh, that looks awesome. Looking good, everybody. Yes, it's really translating. We're gonna do this rotunda, and we're gonna um, we're gonna wait till everything is dry before we do the uh, Nicholson rotunda. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys some time. One thing that's very important as an artist is letting your work dry. I know I might have some per perfectionists in this audience. That's normal. I usually get a couple in my class. Sometimes you can kind of get just very up in there and, and very detail concerned, but we are painting this background and um, this is kind of the easiest part. It's the fastest part. We want it to dry before we put our focus in, which will be the Nicholson Rotunda. So when you are ready, go ahead and let it dry. You can get up, walk around, stand up, do a little stretch. Um, I'm gonna modify a game here for a second. And, um, and then I will let you guys get caught up or finish. And when you are done, I will tell you one more time, this paint dries as a plastic. Now, everybody's got these beautiful kits. We have we teach with these exact brushes like in our studio and to preserve them, we definitely want them in our water cup. Again, this paint dries as a plastic and it will ruin the brush if you let it sit. So you guys just uh, spent good money supplying these brushes. So I don't want any of them to be ruined yet. Go ahead and leave them in your water cup. That is the safest spot for them. And I will tell you at the very end of the class, like the best way to clean these suckers off, but we're not there yet. So everybody put your brush in your water cup when you are ready, go ahead and take a break. I'm gonna help myself to a water. So definitely get up and kind of wander around, get your legs stretching, everything absolutely you wanna do. I'm gonna get up for a second and I will be right back.
Hey, Maddie, I think you might be on mute. Okay, we were discussing a little bit here um, how we would play a game or if my class would be interested in that. Um, a couple of you have your uh, cameras on and I was thinking about playing a game where um, everybody paints something that is more, that is something that represents RMU to you. It could be simple, like uh, the RMU logo, you get creative and paint Romo or a sandwich. However, since most of our cameras are actually off, I don't have a way to see what the rest of the class will be painting. So we were just, uh, me and Jessica were here thinking about different ways we could um, play a game. Uh, so we muted me for a second so we could talk about some ideas so we could uh, keep it a little surprise or see what options we have to do. So we are still drying in this painting. If you still see very shiny bits right here, like see how mine is very shiny? It means this paint is still wet and we cannot move on to the next step of this painting. 
which is beautiful, a beautiful sunset. If you are like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I could paint the Nicholson Rotunda and you are at this stage and you would like to just paint like RMU or Robert Morris University, definitely think about that before we put our rotunda in there. I will be teaching the rotunda. Let's see. Where is our outside? Okay, so one game that I think that we're gonna play, because I think it would just be easier since more people have their microphone on um, and you guys can see me. Let's, so Jessica and I think that we're gonna play a guessing game here. And it's gonna be, she's going out to collect. It's a guessing game. If you have been to Painting with a Twist before, you, have, you might have played this game with us. Um, and it is guessing how many corks are in our little uh, cork container. And the closest one to the actual number, um, we'll see if we can do something like a credit to an arm or um, to a painting with a twist class. So that's what we normally give as like a little prize there. Someone has been dipping into the cork jar. So we, so it's going to be a good guess, but it's a good opportunity. Let's see. Anybody wants to guess how many corks are inside of our cute little wine jar? I'll shake it around like bingo for you. It'll be easy for me to count this way. 11. 11. 17. 17. Do you know how many is in here? 11, 17, I'm not. Eight. Nine? Wow. 12. Well, I'll say. 22. They're eight. getting so many things. Y'all going on and guess the numbers, RMU. Big <laughs> uh-huh, I see how I'll you do nine. 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 Lots of nines. Me and Valerie said nine. <laughs> nine. 13. Turn it around, turn it upside down. Okay, we have a bunch of numbers there. We're gonna figure out. I'll guess 13. 13. 15. My lovely um, assistant here, Fast County. How does everybody spell? It's 12, who says 12 in here? We got one thumbs up. I can tell a thumbs up. Say yes if or vocalize if you said 12. Oh, a reaction. Can you give me a it reaction at the, at the bottom? Give me a give thumbs me up. That's me. Thumbs up. Yeah. Let's see. Let me move my You can come here. What are we doing for the name? That was it. We got lots going on in here. Who said 12? Give me a reaction. Give me a thumbs up. Welcome, welcome to the video side. I know we had someone in here who said 12. Don't leave so, me hanging. Diane said 12. Diane said 12, awesome. Okay. I think this, mine still seems like it is um, not quite dry yet. We're st we are waiting to dry um, if you have one thing that we do in our class, it does take this black paint a while to dry. Um, one thing that you can do if you have it accessible to you is you can take an, a hair dryer. And I would say, if you wanna go ahead and do that, I would make sure your um, audio is off. Um, and if you wanna go, if you have it available to you, you can absolutely blow dry. It helps uh, speed up the drying process. Um, but because like, I understand maybe not everybody in this classroom has a blow dryer accessible to them. One thing you can do is you can wave it in the air. You got like a little fan action going on. Um, but I will say we 100% want this black paint to be dry by the time we start our next step. We're going to be doing a couple different shapes there. Um, here in the upcoming future. Let's see. Do we have any nurses in this group? I'm a nurse. Yeah, my wife is. 
Oh, we got a couple nurses in here. Oh my goodness, that is great to hear. Absolutely. I thought, what about, okay, wait. Is there any um, anybody studying nuclear medicine? Silence, right? <laughs> so I, I thought either I was gonna be in nuke med or um, I wanted to be in the nursing program before I started to take I took my first PR class. Um, I think I was a junior. I look to Jessica like she would know. <laughs> I think I was, um, no, I was a sophomore. Tamara would know. I was young. I was just a baby. <laughs> um, but I came fresh from nursing when I switched over into communications and I started taking my first PR classes. Um, so I absolutely loved the nursing program. I did the first two year years, all the prerequisites had such great um, professors. Like I was really lucky. Um, and RMU is such a big nursing school for Jessica. It is a big nursing school and it's accounting school. Um, and I feel like, am, am I wrong to say that's a lot of the people who come out of RMU are numbers and nurses. <laughs> Maybe yes, maybe no. Tamara's like sort of maybe. I want you to, you should tell everyone the story of how you ended up at Robert Morris. I was literally just telling my new boss <laughs> how that happened. Okay, everybody, story time. Story time with Maddie while my paint is still drying. Your paint is probably also still drying too. Um, everybody, you... Most people are aware, Jessica is now aware, um, that there are two Robert Morrises uh, out here in the United States. Um, and if you did not know, there is a second Robert Morris University. In Chicago. There we go, <laughs> Chicago, that's right. Um, and so originally I'm from Denver, Colorado. So it was pretty bizarre that I ended up in Pittsburgh in the first place. Um, but online, I thought that I was applying to the university in Chicago because I wanted to do as my, how old was 17 year old, 18 year old self was telling my parents, I remember, I want to go to a real university before I go to art school. Um, and so I thought I wanted to go to Museum School of the Arts in Chicago. And so I thought I'd apply to Robert Morris in Chicago and do a year at like a normal university um, and decide if I wanted to pursue art, which I didn't for my entire time at Robert Morris, but here I am today. Uh, your passion will find you. <laughs> um, but so I applied and I heard back and I kept looking at the letter and I was like, I did not apply to anywhere in Pennsylvania. Um, and I looked online, I looked at Facebook, uh, it had a beautiful Facebook page. And uh, uh, I think the website was like updated like that year or the year following. And I just like fell in love with the scenery. I thought it was a very beautiful campus. Um, and I'd never been to Pennsylvania. So I thought like, oh, this is a great opportunity to get out of Colorado and try something new. And and learn a lot of slang like uh, buggy and down to the crick and gum bands and pierogies and whatnot. Um, so it was absolutely a mistake that I ended up at our RMU and I'm just like uh, a world away down here in Savannah. But uh, I worked actually for um, uh, one of the departments that is uh, big on like media and marketing at RMU and they always loved that story. That was my story when I got hired as I was like, oh, I'm, I was studying nursing and I applied to the wrong school and here I am in your department now. So I uh, absolutely loved my time there and it was just kind of like a whirlwind to get there. Um, and I do know a lot of the studi student body and alumna are um, from that greater Pittsburgh area. So everyone always thought it was uh, pretty pretty weird that I had end blown away from Denver, um, got all the way to Pittsburgh. So, but I loved it. I stayed for six years. 
Um, I got my degree and at that time I was really over it. And I tell people in my class to today, I'm tired of the snow. <sighs> I'm tired of scraping my windshield. <laughs> Everyone says, what brought you to Savannah? I was like, I'm tired of scraping my windshield <laughs> and turning my, my car on to heat up, um, all day, you know, like <laughs> in the morning, um, the end half, let's see, I'm still drying. You're probably still drying. I might have, would you blow dry this in the other room? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have Jessica go ahead and blow dry this for me. Doesn't mean that you have to be done. I just want to make sure it's done for my next step. Um, I was done just um, living in the snow and I lived in Mount Oliver just outside of Southside for my last two years of uh, university. And if you know Mount Oliver and Southside, it's very hilly and it's all, and it would be so icy. I think I had um, a front wheel drive, a wheel where I'm not a car person, I'm an artist. <laughs> um, <laughs> But my car was not built to go down those icy roads. And um, I just remember days I could not get out of Mount Oliver, just being stuck there. And I said, phooey, with uh, all this snow and this ice, and I am going to move to the south and be a summer bird full year round. I have not seen snow in over a year, year and a half. Um, it's almost a beautiful thing to me. If you ever get the opportunity to vacation, come down to Savannah. It is so beautiful here, like throughout the year. Has anybody been to Savannah in this class? There's like a few people. Yeah. A couple of us. Yeah. Let's see. I am blow drying. Let's see, let's see. Let me make sure. Everything's going on. That's why. When I muted this class, it mute, remuted again. So I unmuted everybody. We did it. One of my I'm back. I still have like one little little itty bitty like spot that's pretty that's wet. And you can do like a, a touch test. If it comes up on your finger, it means this finger is like the cleanest finger I have on my body. If it comes up on your finger, it means it's not dry. But like this one is tricking me. So I think it's actually pretty good to paint on top of. Good job. Okay, if it's still wet, let it dry. Let it dry. Let's see. Is your computer touch screen? Is that the best way to? Yes. Yeah. There we go. Okay. If you are dry, give me a wave or a thumbs up. I'm just going to sift through here. Okay. We got a couple dry in here. Oh, yes. Good. Looking good. Thumbs up. Yes, absolutely. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, yes. Okay. There's a lot of people. Does your, is your mouse connected? All right, my second half of my class. Also, my family members live in Maryland. Maryland. Oh, what is it like over there this time of year? I never asked one of those family members, but I'll ask that family member and then I'll see what that person says. Ah, you're a little bit broken up there, but I'm assuming Maryland's really cool this time of year. Um, and one thing, oh my gosh, thinking about it, I got a lot of thumbs up, so I'm going to teach my next step of the painting here in a second. Um, I really miss the changing of the trees. 
we have like our trees change maybe for one week in November and then it's like green the rest of the year or, or it's not green. My grandmother is from the Savannah. Oh, did you ever get to go down? No, I never went to Maryland or Savannah. It's beautiful. Definitely come on down here. If you ever get the chance, or once the world opens back up, is what I keep saying, is I just feel like the world has got to open up here eventually. Um, the next step that I'm going to do, and we are going to walk you through this. We're going to all walk through this together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some white paint. I'm taking one more squirt of white. We are going to be drawing our rotunda. So I kind of broke it down here for you. It's a series of shapes. So I'm going to do one shape by and keep going until we get the whole shape through. But this is essentially our shape that we're making. It's not perfect. They made it in Sharpie and this paper is bent. Um, but our idea is we are going back in there. I will be using my mama brush, my mama bear brush, and we are going to make a semicircle with our white paint. And we're not going to be filling it in. We're just going to do like an outline. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, my mama bear brush and you can give it, if you watch how I'm gonna do it, where I'm gonna stay to my left side, if you want it more in the middle, if you wanna do it wherever you want on your canvas, I'm gonna use my, where's my, my papa bear brush? My big brush is a reference. So I want my, my dome of my rotunda to be kind of in the middle of where my yellow is. So that is about, if I put my paintbrush up, it's about halfway through my paintbrush, right up here. So I want the top of my dome to be up here. I'm gonna just draw, do a little mark. That's how tall I want my rotunda to be. And it's going to be almost like you're doing a cup. So it's gonna be a semicircle. You're gonna lose it a little bit in this. So I have a white semicircle floating above the trees, 100% floating up there. And I'm kind of doing this on a side. So like I said in the beginning of the class, I do not believe in straight lines. Everything's gonna come off curved to me, but that's okay. even or out. The second part right underneath our semicircle, and we got like a full cup. If you turn it upside down, it looks like a kitchen bowl that I would eat cereal out of. So I want it to be a little bit rounder. Underneath it is we have a square shape. How dark should it be? So we are just doing a white outline right now. Eventually we will fill it in with a bunch of colors, but I'm just want to give us like an outline um, to kind of provide us with a guide for where- So faint's fine. What's that? So if it's, just, if it's just a faint line, it's fine, right? As long as you can see it, yes. Cool. Mine will look a little bit faint because I'm far back here, but as I work my way down into this black paint, you'll be able to see it really well. So after I have my cereal bowl, my semicircle up at the very top here, I'm going to draw a rectangle just below it, kind of as so. So we are at the second, we're doing our semicircle and then our rectangle right below it. And that rectangle is about, it goes about halfway into the black. So I would say, let's take a brush, it might be a full finger length. You can put your finger up against it. It's kind of far to see here. But we are gonna go ahead and draw in a square or a rectangle. So it looks 
kind of like this right now. Should this square slash rectangle be like a little smaller or a little bigger from the dome? It can be either at this point. So we're gonna do, there's a square section and then there's like kind of two sets of stairs. So if you want it a little bit bigger, if you want it a little bit smaller, it is your painting. You make it bigger or smaller, whatever you wanna do with that does not bother me. I love seeing my classes like customize or, or do something um, that is characteristic of them or is, is on their creative side. So feel free to like add some of your own spunk in there. Uh, if you wanna draw a little Romo on the side, go for it <laughs> or, um, or anything else. At the very end of this painting, I'm gonna open up and encourage everyone to um, you could write Robert Morris University. We're not there yet, but I definitely want you guys thinking about um, a way to customize it to make this your own experience. So I would, maybe I'd put my graduation year or, um, or put Bobby Moe or RMU, uh, but I definitely want it to be custom to everybody else. And I can definitely help. Once we have our first two steps, we are doing our first stair. And I will tell you, See how our first stair, it's less like a, a rectangle. It kind of continues this line. It's more of a, what is it, a parallelogram? I wrote down the word for myself. I was like, I want to make sure I'm using the right word. It's more like a parallelogram. It kind of like has a, like a roof, like a roof kind of like uh, has a little edge on it. So we want to have, this is the first stair we're doing. So it almost looks like a rocket ship at this point. So we're going to make a rectangle, but we're going to add a little bit to our side. So it looks like a little bit of a stair. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and add those in. Boop. See if I got this. Boop. And just draw a straight line connecting the two. So that's the top of our first stair. And see how this line almost follows straight down through where our square and our rectangle is gonna be? We're gonna do that as well. So I'm just gonna follow where my square is and draw out like a little line down there. And at this point, it goes out a little bit further. So we have our second line down and then we have a second little stair that kind of goes a little bit further out. So I'm gonna just go ahead and draw a little line here. Do that second stairway out. And we're gonna fill this in with paint so it doesn't have to be completely perfect at this point. We have that opportunity to fill it in, put some paint in there. I definitely am more of a fan of our Papa Bear brush because your lines can be a little bit more exact. You don't have to have as fine of a line. You're not gonna be doing everything backwards. Same idea here. Kind of like a stairway up to our dome. The last thing we're gonna do in here before we move on to painting in some of our dome is we're gonna do our three rectangles. They're gonna be our three windows inside of our uh, little rectangle under our dome. So we have the biggest square in the center. And I didn't draw it on here, but I could do that for you guys. The first one that I'm going to do is right in the center. And then I'm going to make two smaller ones to the side, just an outline. So it's going to end up looking like that. And we're going to just use that outline, that white paint as a guide. Paint in that first square. And we're gonna do those two to the side of it that are like a little bit smaller. 
But the idea is you want to be able to see through it. So you're still going to see your sunset on the background. It's going to have like a skinny window. And another skinny window. And it looks like this. Our work in progress thus far. If you have never taken a painting with a, a twist class, I will tell you, it gets hard before it gets easy. I get a lot of perfectionists in my class who are like, oh my gosh, my lines aren't perfect, or this is not exactly how it looks like. Um, it's all a process. It's all about layering your paint, um, doing different sorts of things. Uh, so if you are at a place where you're like, oh my gosh, like this is not where I want to be. Don't fret. Don't worry about it. Just trust the process and we're going to get there. Um, but so we have our outline painted. The next thing that I want to do is I want to paint in the top of my dome. And the color I have it like on this painting is like a gray blue. Let's grab it. Maddie, before you get too far into that, can you show like the close up again of the step and stuff? Yes. Do you, would you like rather on the paper plate or the painting? Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we have three windows inside of our rectangle. Let me just switch you for a second. It's not pretty yet, but so we have our semicircle. We have three rectangles on the inside for our windows, and we have two sets of stairs. And see how my lines aren't perfect because I told you all I don't believe in perfect lines. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna take our Papa Bear brush and be able to clean that up really well. So we're gonna cover it in like a gray blue paint. Um, so our lines are gonna get a little bit cleaner. But I just wanted a guide before I kind of started the next step of this. Does that help? Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay, perfect. If you are ready to paint the top of our rotunda, this is like a blue gray. So I will teach you how to make this blue gray, but if you are ready, go ahead and give me a thumbs up so I can see that we are ready for the next step. Thumbs up or a reaction. Okay, we're ready. Majority ready, all right. So the way you make this blue grid, and I thought it was pretty for the top, uh, you can make it, you could do a black dome, you can make it any color your heart desires, honestly, whatever arm you represents to you. If you want to freestyle and paint it red, white, and blue or colors, you can absolutely do that. But I'm going to go ahead and teach this kind of, it's like a steel blue. So what I'm taking is I'm taking my blue paint. I'm gonna take some blue paint and I'm gonna take a little bit of black paint, just like when we were making the navy, blue and some black and some white. Oh, it's getting loud over in my other room. We're throwing around paintbrushes, I can hear it. And it's gonna make a light blue. If you would like to make that more of a gray, add in a little bit more black. Play with it. If you want to add some yellow in, it adds in a little bit of warmer tones. Let's see. Ooh, I like that. That's really pretty. So I added some yellow into it. It's going to just be kind of steel blue. And we have our outline there. We have our guide. We definitely want to make sure we have enough paint. Keep mixing. I'm always mixing paint, I feel like. Let's see. No, it's not dark enough. Okay, I like that. So I have like a, a steel blue, steel blue gray. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my big brush. I already used my mama. I made an outline. I take Papa Bear and go ahead and fill in that circle that semicircle.
Like laugh and listen into this other one. <laughs> Now I like to use my big brush because it covers more area. See, my hair is in there. Nobody's gonna tell me my hair is covering my painting. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I have a lot of it, so I'm always working with it. Um, but what I like about this big brush is it covers a lot more area than going to try to tackle this with a little one. Now, if you were more comfortable with a little one, absolutely go for it. Take out that mama bear brush and finish those edges. We're gonna have like a nice little steel blue. Now I left a little bit of an edge in mine. You might be able to see it in the video, but I think it makes for like a really pretty little highlight. If you covered over your lines completely, that's A-OK -okay too. My brush just didn't reach that far when I was turning my side. Um, the we're gonna use this color for one other thing. So I have my steel blue. My very bottom stair is also this same steel blue. I want it to be a little bit darker, like a shadow. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my Papa Bear brush and I'm gonna go to this very, let's see, bottom stair. I'm gonna go ahead and paint that in as well. And this is where I can be more specific with my line work. Miss Maddie, could you tell me um, what colors you used to make your steel blue again? So I went and used my blue, my black, my white, and where's my white? Oh, it's down here, I'm pointing the red. My white and my yellow. So the way I did that is my first scoop of blue, a little bit of black, add in a little bit of black at a time, and then add white in a tiny itty bitty, itsy bitty, teeny tiny polka dot bikini amount of yellow. See how much yellow I'm using? Just a teeny tiny bare bit, it's itsy bitsy. And then I paint myself, going back to my stare. <laughs> my lower stair so it's going to have more of a shadow to it so I wanted it to be darker. It's a little bit lighter than my dome but that's okay. So I want you to take that same color that we just made so your steel blue. I want you to add a lot of white into it. We're going to make it a lot lighter. Clean off my brush one more time. Maddie, not to ask too many questions. Could you show us which bottom step, like where that coloring goes to? That is, no, I love the questions. If you have a question, it means a lot. Maybe other people have the same question. It's my second one. So it's the top of my very second one. So it's like a, a hop and a skip. It's the parallelogram. It's not um, the rectangle. And if you, and the really nice thing about this paint is it dries really quickly. So if you painted the wrong stair or, or you want to change it, um, it dries, let it dry, completely dry. And once it's dry, we can paint over it. It's really cool. I love that you're able to layer with this painting or this paint and this painting. Um, but for the next step of this painting, I'm going to add some white already into that like steel blue. It makes kind of like an off blue color. It's a shadow. We want to do all these shadows first. I know um, the rotunda is white, but um, painting pure white on here would, wouldn't add any dimension. It would be very two dimensional. Um, and if you like that, if you would like to do that, we can paint it. You can you are absolutely have the free reign to paint this white. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the inside, not inside of my windows, 
but just in here. And the way I'm gonna do that is I mixed my paint on my Papa Bear. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Mama Bear because this is a tighter space to go ahead in here and paint that inside where my windows go. I'm gonna give myself my line up at the top. Now we're not painting the inside of the windows. We wanna be able to see our sunset. We're just painting around those rectangles. Did anybody sign up for any other um, Spirit Week activities? No, we were interested in Miss Maddie's paint class. That's what we were interested in. Uh, yes, I did the um, drafter. That's gonna be on Thursday. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> Lots of microphone background activity going on. That's okay. Okay, I'm gonna pull this up really close to you so you can see it. It's starting to come together. We got our windows in. I have my blue painted so we can see through our windows. Very pretty. And it's not white, it's like pretty close. It's that light steel blue. I wanna see how some people are doing. Does anyone wanna, is anyone brave enough to flip over their canvas? Show me what you're doing. I wanna see where everybody's at. Oh yes, Tamara, I like it. Let's see what else we got. I always forget it's a touch screen. Oh, yes, looking good. Uh, all right, I like it. Okay, okay, we're getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's a work in progress. Isn't that right? Kind of like getting to RMU for me. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we're going to keep using this base that we have made. Oh, yes, look at that. Real good. Awesome. Looking good. So we're going to keep using this base. See how that I keep adding white to this color. I'm going to add some more white. We're just going to, it's going to be like layers. That's about. More white to this blue. This blue gray, blue steel gray. And where I'm going to go with this one is I'm going on the very bottom stair below where we painted this steel gray, right down here. See, if you take your, your big papa bear, you can just go straight across, very easy, clean line. So we have our very bottom stair painted. And then we're gonna go above, right above that steel gray 
and paint one step above it. So I'm gonna go right up here. You can use your mama brush. Mine is a little bit skinnier. I'm still with Papa. And then we're going to keep adding white to that same color. Add as much white as you can. You're going to be like, I'm running out of white. We're doing our last stair top here, our lightest one. To keep adding some white in there. You might need to pour yourself some more white. All right, and we're doing that last stair. See, we have this last little black piece in here. Oop, I went a little bit deep into my blue, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and fix that here with my mama brush. So we've painted those stairs and we are also going to paint in like our windows. So we have like just little simple windows here with our white. Now, if it's easier for you to lay your painting down on the table and do this, go ahead and do that. I think a lot of people, oh, I'm taking mine with me. Uh, I think a lot of um, a lot of people in my class like to do that just because it more you're more used to putting your elbow on the table and drawing in your line. Um, so feel free to do that if that makes more sense to you. Sometimes what helps me is like turn my canvas because my line that goes, um, I can do a better line across my canvas, kind of like this, instead of up and down, I'm a little bit more shaky. So play around with it. If you wanna put your canvas down on your, on your table, just be mindful of where your paint is wet and where you're putting your arm. If you wanna turn it like me, um, go ahead and do that. But I'm gonna go ahead and paint in white windows. So it's just a window frame, we're not painting inside of the windows, it's just kind of a little outline. We are getting pretty close. Which brush are you using, baby brush or mama brush? I'm using my mama, but if you would like to use your baby brush, go ahead and do it. No holding back, full commitment. Sometimes that's easier to control, absolutely. Um, I'm just more interested in having, trying to get it to translate, because if I used a baby brush on this, this canvas, I'm not sure if everybody would be able to see it at this point. Um, so I'm gonna use my big brush. I'm just gonna do little out, or my mama brush, not my big brush. I'm gonna do my little outlines in my windows for my window frame.
And we also have little branches across our windows, little dividers. I'm used to teaching trees, if you can't tell. <laughs> My little branched windows. And my last step here, we have two kind of last steps that we're going to do. So I want to add a little bit of detail in. So go ahead. You can use your baby brush to do this. I'm going to use my mama brush um, just because it's going to be able to be portrayed better. Um, and I'm just going to add in, like, we have a little bit of divide on top. And then some highlight to our stair. Fix some little areas. And over here on the side, I mentioned that I wanted you to customize this painting to you. Um, and whatever RME represents to you. So I think what I would like to do, I might be a little bit lopsided over here, is I would like to write I don't know whether I would like to do RMU or Robert. I think I might just do RMU on the side over here. Just to customize it, I might put my graduation year. So it's a little bit meaningful to me. And I'm gonna use my mama brush to do this. And I'm just gonna, R. You could write out Robert Morris University. If you, um, prefer to spell it, to write it out in like pencil before. Uh, one thing that we teach here and I'm not a lot of people have accessible is we like to use chalk. So if you have chalk available to you, absolutely you can chalk it in. You could write it in with a pencil. I'm gonna go ahead and paint mine in. So we have R M and a U, dip some more paint in there. Could you show how to do the windows again, please? Absolutely. So you can take your baby brush or your mama brush. I use my mama brush just because I want you guys to be able to see these lines. And I just took my white paint and gave myself an outline. Just like this. Oop, a little bit over there. That's okay. And if it makes more sense to use a baby brush for you, go ahead and do it. If you're in my classroom right now, I would say um, you could use either for this detail, but just because I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. I'm trying to use bigger lines. So we make a window and we're gonna do little lines across. And I put RMU to my side. And then I'm going to put 19 for the year I graduated. And I will always sign my paintings after I'm done. So I like to paint a little bit fast. So how's everybody going? Do you want to show me what you got going on? Are you at your windows? Are you thinking about what you're going to write? Since we got lots of space going on in here in the side over here. Let me hear it. You're like, I'm very concentrated. <laughs> I'm still working on windows. <laughs> okay, windows are good. Let's see. I have a question about the, uh, I'm still in the steel blue colors. Um, oh. What, which um, parts are the same color? We got the very base of the stairs. So it doesn't translate as perfectly um, through screen. But so I have the bottom of my stair, kind of the flat part. That is the same as my building up here. And then my top stair is going to be the lightest. That's where the light hits, like from the sun. And then I made my second one kind of darker. Um, because it's going to be where there's more of a shadow. If you would like to make it darker across the board, you can absolutely do that. If you want to use more white and put white highlights in throughout here, you can absolutely do that as well. We 
We are at, I know we started a little bit late here. We at, are at that nine o'clock mark on the time right now. Everybody's getting close if they're either putting in their windows or putting in some of those um, little details. I keep touching the, there we go. Going back here. Where is everybody else at? Is anybody, uh, is anybody still doing um, your blues? Are we at windows? Oh, that looks great. Ah, oh, they look awesome. Oh, we got one. Um, one thing that we do like to do um, is we're going to uh, take a group photo here at the very end. It's going to, we're going to try to take that at. I want to say 9, 10, so that gives you about, I don't have my phone in front of me, seven minutes um, to go ahead and put some details on there. If you are not done, that's A-OK, -okay. um, but I would just love to take like a group screenshot so everybody can show me their little bit of RMU so I can post it. Um, and we can post it down here in Savannah and have a little bit of Pittsburgh down here as well. So we are gonna take that group photo in seven minutes. Okay, absolutely. Give me a shout out if you have questions or concerns, I can walk you through something or, um, or if you need some inspiration. I thought it was really pretty. Oh, it looks It's awesome. a good thing I'm better at advising nursing students than at, <laughs> at painting. But I'm we're here saying. for have we're here for the good time and get to like <laughs> see some familiar faces. And if you would rather, one thing that I also did, I gave an option. I made a couple of drafts of this before I made it. If you would rather make, write Robert Morris University across your entire canvas instead of just in this corner, you can absolutely do that as well. I thought Robert Morris, like I wanted to write out Robert Morris University, but I knew it would take me so long and I want to be here for you guys before I do that. Oh, it looks awesome. So in, in ten, seven, is it six minutes here now? So at 9.10, we are all going to put our canvases up to our webcams, and we are going to take a group photo for me. So we're all getting kind of close to that ending time. It's been so much fun. Has anybody taken any um, painting classes online? Getting some notes. I know it was kind of, it was really cool. I had a lot of fun with you guys and it, it was pretty cool getting to talk about RMU and, and I uh, don't get to talk about RMU that much now that I live all the way down here. Um, but I had a lot of fun. And then uh, if you have questions or whatnot, you can um, email. I'm sure the department can put you in touch with us. Um, or, or even, yeah, I think that's the best way that to do any contact if you have questions. Um, or if you want to leave reviews, that would be great too. And say, oh my gosh, that was so much fun um, painting on virtually with Miss Maddie and Jess down here in Savannah. Um, I think we could... What would everyone else be interested in if we offered something else RMU flavored? I was thinking about painting Romo or do you guys like the landscape ideas? Oh, I love them. They look awesome. The gardens would be pretty. <laughs> oh my gosh, the gardens would be really pretty. I didn't even that, think that. that seems a little advanced for my art. <laughs> <laughs> it would be, it would be rather advanced. Doing all these landscapes would be. 
Oh, yeah. Absolutely awesome. Got some looking good. Yes. Um, we're going to take that photo here in a couple minutes. Let me see. Let me send out a survey. Okay. Um, from the RMU side, we are going to, they're going to try to send out a survey. So if you enjoyed this class, definitely give some good reviews. Or if you have some feedback or different ideas, we love to hear it. We love to hear that feedback. Um, what else? So we got gardens. Um, these landscapes, this uh, sunrises and sunsets are going to be a little bit more on the advanced side. But if we went a different direction, we could paint like um, Romo or maybe some like RMU memorabilia sort of um, different sort of thing. But I'm thinking the gardens too, they would be beautiful, but it would be a really hard painting. You're right. I think doing um, maybe one or the other side of Joe Walton Stadium would be really cool to paint. Oh, it would be really cool to paint. I think so too. Um, also, you guys are picking all the hard paintings. You are. <laughs> Let's see, anything else? I'm trying to think about, I was like, <laughs> it's like, what if we paint a sandwich because it makes me think of Romo. <laughs> but that's just me, I'm silly like that. But mostly I'm hungry. I'm ready for dinner. I made like a pot roast that's like in the crock pot, like waiting for me when I get home. I'm really excited about it. <laughs> okay, we are nearing that time. We have two minutes and I want everybody to put up their canvas to the screen here so we can take a group photo just like this. Is it, can you screenshot on your computer? I know how to do it on a Mac. It's like a certain. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Okay. If everybody would hold up their canvas with me, my arm is backwards. Hold her up. We're going to take a picture. We got a couple more we're waiting for here. Oh, here everybody comes. Welcome. It's good to see your faces. Couple more. Oh my gosh, this looks awesome. Everybody was so talented. If anyone wants to put their canvas up, we are gonna take this picture in. Five, four, three, give me some smiles. Two, one, awesome, awesome work, everybody. This was so much fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, I love seeing everybody's work. We're getting a couple people in and out here. Um, I had so much fun with everybody. So um, definitely send out a survey. We'll talk about, um, I think they're going to talk about what they'd offer in the future. But I really loved getting back in touch with everybody and kind of like talking my RMU and wearing my, my RMU spirit, like I said. Um, very excited and I hope everybody had as much fun with me. I told y'all how we were going to clean these brushes. So I'm going to go ahead and teach you how to do that. And then I'm going to let y'all go here. Um, the way I clean these brushes is you want to make sure all the paint is out. You want to use fresh water and I believe we use Dawn dish soap. Just dish soap will work. You can just dip your brush in some soap and you can swirl it around on your hand. We just want all that paint out of it if you want to conserve the, these beautiful brushes that we use. Um, we're going to do that for all of them. And then you are free to go. You've got great brushes um, and a little bit of RMU memory. Lots of love. Bye, Tamara. Um, I hope everybody had a good time. Look out for a Thursday. And um, have a good time. Got lots of microphones, but thank you so much, everybody. Feel free to keep working, do your thing. I think we're gonna log off here now that our time has been made. Thank you, Maddie. Um, but thank, thank you. you, thank you. Thank you.